So I've gotten a few requests to uh, do an update video on the Power Mac G4 mirror drive door computer. So we're going to do that in this video. And I'll show you guys what's become of that computer. And uh, this video also marks the first video for 2016. Woohoo! Go! New year! Uh, we're also recording on a new camera here at the, at the moment. So uh, yeah, so we'll see how it turns out. The rest of the footage is still uh, from the old camera, so never mind that. But Anyway, uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look at this Paramount G4, and uh, I think it's uh, it's turned out okay. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So as it turns out, the logic board is bad on this G4 MDD. The processor card, I'm not entirely certain about, but it doesn't matter. The motherboard, the logic board, is definitely the problem. I was able to get this thing to turn on. Unfortunately, it only turned on one time. When I say turned on, I mean it actually pushed the power button, everything came up, and I had a chime. I did have that after the fifth time I heated this thing up. And then after that, nothing ever again. So, I have a feeling that there is something cracked or broken in the solder joints or maybe the traces on this logic board. And so, the best thing is to do is just get the uh, new logic board for this thing. There are some new ones on eBay currently for 19 bucks a piece, brand new. The only difference is that board is the 133 megahertz version and this board is the 167 megahertz bus version of the board. But that's not a problem because the only difference between those two boards is there is a resistor down here that controls the bus speed and on the 133 bus motherboard I just need to go ahead and remove that itsy bitsy tiny uh, resistor down there in order to get it to run at 167 bus. This motherboard being a 167 bus board, it actually already has that resistor missing on here. So anyway, that's where we're at. So this project's going to uh, get put on the back burner for a little while until I get a board ordered and uh, put it in. Hopefully the seller has more than 10 available, so hopefully I'll have enough time to uh, decide to go ahead and get one. But so far, I guess this is what you expect for 7 bucks. But at least the hard drives were in it, at least the memory was in it. The CD-ROMs were missing, but that's no big deal. I can find one to stick in here. That's definitely not a big deal at all. The power supply works. Power supply is probably the most expensive item on one of these to replace. So you might remember a while ago I did a video on this PowerMac G4 mirror drive door computer that I got off eBay. And I already suspected before I got the computer that the logic board is most likely a problem in it, and I just wanted to see why the logic board had failed. And as it turned out, it was the memory control on the back side of the board. The BGA joints had broken on it. And heating it up did not resolve the issue permanently. It worked for a small time and then it quit again, so I ended up finding some logic boards on eBay for about 20 bucks at that time, but they were 133 megahertz bus boards, they weren't the 167, and I could have done the resistor mod on it to bring it up to 167, but it, the whole system just kind of got shelved for a while, slid under, the, slid under the kitchen table there. Summer and vintage computer hall and other projects kind of, well this thing had to take a backseat to all that stuff. So I finally got around to looking on eBay, and by the time I looked, well those logic boards were no longer around, so I ended up finding another one. I found the correct board that I needed for what I wanted to pay for it, which was about $25 actually. That's what the seller agreed to. And it's the correct version with 167 bus already. And uh, yeah, let's just see uh, how that arrived. And here's the logic board as it has arrived in the mail from the United States Postal Smashers. As you can see, they've done an excellent job once again with taking care of their packages that are entrusted into them. Yeah, at least it's somewhat flat on the bottom. But yeah, I guess we'll find out if the motherboard's still flat or not, and if the board even works. Good job once again, guys. Priority mail posted smashers, I suppose, here. Yeah. 
Oh boy. All right, let's see what we got in the box here. So far it looks like everything's okay. I won't know until we power it up, however. It did come with two gigabytes of RAM. That was part of the sale here. So yeah. So I guess the next step is, is to get this thing in the case and find out if, uh, if it lives or not. Sure hope so. Because I probably won't buy another one of these if it doesn't. You may also remember that I got an XServe processor for this computer because I thought the original processor board was bad due to a bend in the PCB from the heat and the pressure of the heatsink being applied to it over time. So this computer is running the XServe processor right now. That's what we've got in it. 1.33 gigahertz. And it's a bit like running a Xeon processor. You know, it's throwing a Xeon in a desktop. That's, that's always cool to, when you can do that. So you're probably wondering, did all this stuff actually end up bringing this computer back to life? she is all put back together so yeah this is uh, this was a fun project I'm glad I got the system back up and working and uh, yeah it most certainly did decide it wanted to live another day and because of that I decided to reward it with an airport extreme Wi-Fi card that I had laying around at work it makes it a little bit easier when sitting on the kitchen table there to get internet access to this thing. So boot it up here. I've cleaned off some of the previous owner's uh, stuff on the desktop. Now that the system's actually working, I can see it was installed on this hard drive. And it turned out to be OS 10.3.9 on here. And I've got 2 gig of RAM running in this thing. These processor boards are kind of interesting because it's a G4 chip. 
256k of level 2 cache and 2 megabytes of level 3 cache per processor. So it's an interesting little chip they've got going on there. I tend to believe this operating system was reinstalled prior to uh, the system dying completely because iTunes had never been opened. There is a fairly significant amount of music on this computer, but it looks like documents and stuff that were transferred over from a previous Macintosh, probably a G3 iMac, I would just imagine, probably. I don't really know that for sure. But uh, you can see here there's an iTunes library here and some music backed up. And it's not a whole lot, but hey, I'll take it. Candace had a nice selection of music on here, though. I gotta give her a thumbs up on that. That's just the name of the user account on this computer. So, has it made a full recovery? Well, that's still something that I'm trying to figure out here, but I think it's actually doing quite well right now. I also dug out the Apple Pro speakers that I had laying around, brand new in the box. These are quite cool as well. I'd say the sound is okay on them. Not quite as good as I thought they'd be, but not bad either. They're definitely cool with that clear plastic surround there. And this is what the IDO chip on the back side of the logic board is for to drive these external speakers. 15 watts per channel, as a matter of fact. Well, the networking works, and given the fact that I run Linux for a server, it wasn't that hard to get this thing up and going and getting connected to the network. I've been putting some games on this system. If you're wondering where I got these games, MacintoshGarden.org. That is a website that I strongly recommend going and visiting if you're wanting to get any apps or games for these older Macs. They have an extensive library of free games and software to download on there, and they're really actually good games too. They're not crap that you don't want to play. Quake 3 for Macintosh I got off of there as a matter of fact. And it runs very nice on this computer. I'm going to run a benchmark here, but don't blink because you might actually miss it. The benchmark score here, 231, 234, sometimes it gets up to 240. It kind of fluctuates around, but it's still far, far faster than it needs to be. It's doing a good job here. And I have enabled SMP on, I see zero improvement with SMP enabled in the frame rate. So I'm sure the video card is hitting a wall here. If this Mac decides it wants to continue to behave itself, I might reward it with a nice X800 graphics card and stick in here. But for now, we're running a Radeon 9000. That's just what the computer came with. It might be a 9600 actually. I will have to check that. Some of the other games I've put on here, they won't run for various reasons. Some of them are OS 9 games, and as I found out, OS 9 Classic is not installed on this computer. So that's something I'm going to have to do. It may involve me having to reinstall the operating system because Star Trek Elite Force 2 doesn't run on this computer either. And that's an OS X game, so I don't really know what's wrong with it there. Another game I've installed on this computer, which turned out to be something that I would actually really recommend if you've got one of these old Power Mac G4s, it's completely free from MacintoshGarden.org as well, uh, Blood Rain. Uh, you play a vampire in this game, and you, she's, Rain is really nice to look at in this game. There's a lot of nice jiggling and bouncing and stuff like that in the cinematics, and even while I don't necessarily like cinematics, there's definitely a lot of them in this game, and it does get kind of boring. Um, I, I don't mind watching these ones all that much because there's, like I said, there's a lot of nice, there, there's, they did a nice job on the modeling, let's just put it that way. And it's a little bit like blood in the sense that, you know, you're going around, you're shooting 
mummies and zombies and stuff like that. And you play a vampire, which you have to eat occasionally. It's quite entertaining to actually said, listen to her eat. I'm going to leave through these documents. Maybe I can find something about past outbreaks of the disease. <laughs> There's something strangely arousing about that. That wall stretches across the whole town. Thirty feet high. I can see that. So? From what I understood, even the earliest... Well, anyway, highly recommend it. It runs good on this system. It gets a little slow, though, on this system once we start getting into the graveyard. And there's fog on the ground and stuff like that. The fog effect really hammers this graphics card. That's one of those problems with these older graphics cards. They couldn't handle that effect very well. And uh, this is the main reason why I'm thinking about getting X800 for this system. So if it conti continues to behave itself, I I'm going to reward it because I definitely want to play this game some more. Uh, also, highly recommended two-button mouse on this game. It uh, the Apple Macintosh mouse. Ad, the, there's you don't want to play this game with that mouse or any first-person shooter, as far as I'm concerned. be on this channel again at some point and uh, just some benchmark comparisons and things like that if it continues to work good uh, it might get a little bit of a case restoration as well there's a lot of problems with this case and I don't know if I really care enough to fix them but um, I might try to clean the side panel a little bit better than I have so there's a lot of scuffs on this thing and it's not in the best of shape, which is why I was a little hesitant if I wanted to actually put any kind of money into this thing, but I found the logic board. I already had a nice processor for it, so I figured, well, let's just go ahead and bite the bullet and get it done. So, uh, hard drive upgrade, that's another thing. Uh, although they work fine, so. Anyway, um, I think that's about it for this for right now, so thank you very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you again right here on the Wayback Tech Channel. 
Peace out, everyone.